What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue with Netcode for Game Objects. Specifically we're going to be looking at creating an XR rig that is going to be multiplayer. This means that we can create virtual reality experiences where we can have many clients connecting to it and also interacting with different objects in the scene. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process. We're going to be creating an XR rig. We're going to be adding an avatar. We're going to be mapping different actions on the controllers. There's a lot to do that I'm really excited about it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is creating an XR rig. So the way that I have this set up, and this is gonna be checked into source control, is I have two different scenes. One of them is the setup scene. And the setup scene is the one that is going to set up the network manager. We haven't created a prefab for the player just yet, but we're going to be creating that in this video. And I also have a canvas, which is what you see right here. So the idea is that we're going to be landing in this scene. The local player, there's not going to be multiplayer in this scene just yet, but we're going to be able to select, are we going to be the host or we're going to be the client? And based on that information, we're going to go into a new scene and start either the host or start the client. So that gives us flexibility to determine who we're going to be. So we also have an XR origin in here, which is basically uh, XR rig that doesn't move. It's just going to allow us to move our head and basically interact with the, with the UI. So once we have this set up, we're gonna be jumping into a new scene. So if you go into the network manager, we also have the scene transition handler, which is gonna take us to the XR multiplayer main. I could cover more about this. All this is doing is basically gonna allow us to, to switch scenes and be able to keep our network objects alive. So the network implementation and the documentation goes in depth into how this works. But for now, just know that it's available. You can download it from the repo. And this default main menu is gonna be the main menu that we're going to be going into. So that's the name of the next scene. So we're starting in setup, we're going, in, we're going into main. Couple more things that I also want to mention before we, we start digging deep into the XR rig multiplayer is these are gonna be the dependencies that I currently have we don't need all of them just yet because we're not gonna be implementing Relay just yet. I show you how to do that in a different video. So in this video, just make sure that you have the XR Interaction Toolkit, which, is, which I'm using 1.00 pre.a. And by the time that you watch this video, there might be a different one. And I'm also using the Unity.net Code Game Objects. And then this is a version and also the UTP adapter. So just make sure you have those before you get started because otherwise, you know, things might not work exactly as I show you. And I'm also using Unity 2020.3.16F1. So if you download the code from GitHub, make sure that you, you use the same version at least. Or if you upgrade and you have issues, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll be able to tell you how to fix it. Okay, so now that we have these scenes, so if you go into file and then build settings, you're gonna see we have the setup and then we go into main. So make sure you have those two added to build settings. So if we go into main, you're gonna see that this one doesn't have an XR rig right now. And the reason for that is because we're gonna be creating that through the network manager. It's going to create an instance of that. And it's gonna make it you know, multiplayer because we're gonna be adding a lot of components to that. Then we have the XR Interaction Manager because we're gonna be interacting with different objects and obviously using an XR rig. This component is very important, the Input Action Manager, because it's gonna allow us to use more of an action-based inputs. So we're gonna be using the new input system, which is hooked into the XR Toolkit. So make sure that you have that at it. And you, know, you can just right click on it and then just create an empty object and then just associate the, the input asset which is also part of the sample. So if we go into Windows and then Package Manager, and we go and look at the XR Toolkit, you're gonna see that we have, so if we go here into the, pro, the assets that we currently have in our project, and then you go into the XR Interaction Toolkit, you're gonna see that we have samples here. So I recommend that you download the, basically the default input actions. I also did the XR Device Simulator. I don't really like it, to be honest. <laughs> It's very confusing, but anyways, I have those two added. This one is really important for what we're gonna be doing. This one is going to be optional. So make sure you do that. So once you get those input actions, you're gonna be binding them to the action asset. There's also a network startup, which is going to, is going to determine whether it's going to you know, start as a host or start as a client based on what happened on the first scene. So if we go and look at that very quick so that I can show you 
how that works. Basically, at this point, we should know that we're going to be starting as a host. So this is going to be a variable that we're going to be setting in the scene transition handler. And if we start as a host, we start as a host. If we start as a client, we start as a client. That way, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to do any any other magic to to get this going. The scene transition handler is going to tell us what we need to start with. And if I have another computer starting as a host, then that computer will be the host. And then if I have this computer starting as a client, then this computer is going to be the client. So just a very simple implementation. Okay, so once you have that, I also have a grabable, which I'm not going to be covering a lot in this video. Just know that it's going to be spawning a bunch of different game objects that we're going to be able to interact with with the XR multiplayer component. And then basically just a floor that, you know, so that we can play the XR rig on. I'm going to go ahead and right click in the hierarchy and then go into XR. And we're going to be creating an action base component. So make sure that you don't do the XR origin, do the XR origin action base. And then this one we can rename. I think I name it XR multiplayer. We can say XR rig multiplayer. And then once you do it, you know, you're going to rename it. And then this is going to have an XR origin by default. I'm also going to be changing the, the tracking origin mode. I'm going to be selecting device. And I have a couple settings in here that we're going to be setting. So this one is going to be the camera offset. I set it to 1.36144. So make sure that you set it to that. We're also going to be adding a locomotion system because we're going to be allowing the system to Basically, it's going to be a rig that we can move around. And I can also do a snap rotation. So we're going to be adding a couple of components to that. I don't think this one is required, but I always add it just in case. It's going to add the reference in there. I think if you don't add it, it just going, it's going to look at the game object that you have right now to get it. But I always add it just in case. So we have those two added. Now we need to add what's called a continuous move provider. This one we could go in and add it, but I'm going to show you why we don't I'm not going to add it this way because I want to make sure that I disable it. I disable the input if I am not the owner of the client. So if I'm if I'm doing a networking game and I am the owner, the one that has to do the inputs, I'm going to allow inputs. I'm going to allow the rig to basically move around. But if I'm another client who is not who I'm not the owner of, basically if we have multiplayer game with multiple clients, I don't want to have the input cause other players to basically move. So we need to have a way on the networking game to, to be able to disable this. And I didn't want to do, just do this. I want to just disable the input. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Let's go ahead and remove this. And we're going to be creating a new component. So if we go into scripts, there is a network mode provider that I already have. So this one is going to be very simple. We're just going to do serialize field. And then bring in the Unity Engine namespace. And then I'm going to say private bool enable input actions. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm like, again, I'm going to disable it from the other client. So, and then I'm, I'm also going to be doing a protect it, override, and then we're going to be overriding the read input. Basically, it's going to go into this class and it's going to override the implementation of it. But we're going to determine where, whether we want to read the input, whether we want to move or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if enable, if enable input actions, if it's not enabled, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return vector two zero. So that way, if we, like I said, if we are a client that is not the owner, then we can disable this rig from moving at all. Okay, so if we go back into here, instead of using the continuous mode provider, I'm going to be using the network mode provider, which is also an action base provider. So, and then what we can do here, we can add the locomotion system. We're going to be enabling a strafe, enabling gravity and I think all of these ones are okay. Then the other thing that I did is we can, you know, this is going to be the variable that we're going to be set depending on whether we want to allow input or not. I also am going to be binding the left hand move action. So this one we can say that we're going to move with the left hand so we can just search for left hand. And I like to use the list here so we can see everything. And then you're going to see that everything, you need to label everything in an easy way to find out. So if we want to move with this component, all we have to do is just select which hand we're going to be using and what property, which is going to be move. So this is basically going to allow us to move with the continuous move provider. Now the next part that we're going to do here is going to be adding a snap move provider. And I'm also going to be using the action base. I'm also going to be binding the locomotion system. This is going to tell you if you want to allow, you know, how much of a turn you want. So I'm just going to do 45. 
the bounce time, I think I left that by default. I'm not gonna allow this one to turn around. I, I thought that was kind of weird. I didn't like that experience. But if you wanna do it, you can allow. Basically what happens, this component is going to allow you to, you can do a turnaround, which is gonna be, you know, basically you're gonna be facing on the opposite direction if you use that. This one is just gonna allow us to move a 45 degree angle every time. And then instead of using the left hand, I'm gonna use the right hand here. And then for the right hand, I'm just gonna say right hand. Or you can just type in right. And then you can look for, so there's a move here that's also a turn, so it's gonna be the one that we currently use. So we have a move provider, we also have a snap provider. So now the next component that we're going to be using is going to be the actual character controller. And I'm gonna get closer in here so we can see everything that we're creating. And some of the properties in here are gonna stay the same. We're gonna have a slope limit of 45. This is going to stay at 0.3. I think the skin width, I left it intact. The center, some of these are gonna be set automatically by a different component that I'm gonna be adding. The radius is going to be 0.1, and then the height, I'm gonna make it, I think I made the height about the same as the camera offset. And if we do that, you're gonna see that that kind of, this is kind of how it's going to, is going to align. Okay, so once we have that, there's gonna be another component that we need to add, and it's gonna be the character controller driver. And this is also going to require that we pass in the locomotion provider. So in this case, I'm just gonna add this component here. And it's gonna tell you what is what's the minimum high, and these are gonna be just left alone like we have it by default. Okay, so that's gonna be most of the components that we need to have that are core to the XR, uh, basically the XR origin. There's really not networking thing other than this is just a component that we added. But what we're gonna be doing now, we're gonna be adding the, the networking components. So I'm just gonna do network object. This is gonna be the only component that is gonna have a network object, this is gonna be the parent, and then the child, so I'm gonna have different networking transform that we're going to be adding. So that's gonna be that, and then I'm also going to be adding a client network transform. This component, it's one that I covered in the previous video, but if you don't see it by default, go into Package Manager, and if you go into the Package Manager, you're gonna go into your, basically, where is it, Netco for Game Objects, and you're gonna see that there's also an examples which is called Client Network Transform. And what it is, just to give you uh, an overview if you haven't watched the previous video, this is gonna allow you to synchronize transforms basically from a client to the server and to other clients automatically without you having to specifically call the server and then do some magic on the server side to synchronize that to the clients. So this one makes it really easy to work with. Okay, there's one caveat to this and I wanna show you what that is. If you go into that component, let's go ahead and go back in here. There, well, the first thing that I need to do is I don't want to synchronize the scale because I don't, I'm not gonna be changing the size of the XR rig multiplayer, so this is something that I don't need to do. And then the other thing that I need to do that I had to make a change to the script is currently when, this, this, when the object gets spanned automatically, which is gonna be the player, this is gonna determine whether we can com commit the transform or not based on the ownership. So what this means is that if I'm the player, if I'm the owner, basically the local player, and I own this object, I'm gonna be able to transform, uh, to synchronize its transforms. Basically, we can synchronize the position, the rotation. In this case, the scale won't be synced because I disabled that. But this property is the one that is gonna determine whether we can do that or not. And it's only gonna happen for the owner. So, but this only happens when we spawn the object, but if I am, um, let's say that I want to start using grabbables where I'm gonna be able to pick up an object. Well, I want to be able to change ownership if I have multiple clients because one client may want to pick up an object and move it around, and then I may want to also pick up that object, so I need to be able to change ownership. And if I only do this here, I'm not gonna be able to sync those transforms. So I had to make a change in here and basically just add this line to, to this check. Basically, it's gonna allow us to change who can commit that transform or not. Well, if I'm, I'm changing the ownership, then at this point I should be able to do that. I'll show you more about this as we get to grabbing different objects. Okay, so once we have that, I think we're good to go with basically some of the main components. The other thing that I need to also add is gonna be one that we're going to be basically implementing in this video, and it's going to be the network player. So network player, right now, just know that it's just an empty C-sharp script, but we're going to be adding more to it. So. The next thing that I need to do as well, if we go into prefabs, I also have this cool guy that I designed 
It's very sophisticated 3D. <laughs> And, and I'm a fan of it because I actually was looking for somebody to help me with this, but just know that this is just a cool dude that I just created and he has an XR developer shirt. So basically just, you know, a sphere here, a couple eyes, a mouth, the body, and then a logo. So nothing, nothing crazy. But what we're going to do with this guy is I'm going to grab him from my prefabs and I'm going to add him to the main camera. And the way this is going to work is basically going to allow me to you know, to if I move the camera, then this guy, it's basically going to be moving. The next thing that we need to do is we also need to change the position. So for the position, I'm going to set it to negative 0.25. That way we can align it correctly. And I also have the scale set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. So that's going to be, you know, if I move, like I said, if I move the main camera, this guy is going to move. There's also going to be a couple of things that we need to change on the, on the actual left hand and right hand controller. So if we go into the left hand controller, you're gonna see that we have an XR controller action base, also an XR ray interactor, which is gonna allow us to use a ray to, to be able to interact with items. So what I need to do here on the XR controller for both of them is, let me see if I can do both at the same time. Looks like I can. I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna change the model. The model that I'm gonna be using, it's going to be one that I already have in here, which is going to be the controller. And it looks like I don't show it in there for some reason, but you can drag it and drop it in here. And if we go into it, I can show you what it is. It's basically just a simple controller that I have, that I got from the XR examples that they provide in Unity, but you can download it from this project as well. So once you have that, you should have basically a model that is going to be instantiated automatically for you as a child of the left-hand controller and also one of the right-hand controller. The next thing that I need to do here as well is not only we need to add the client network transform on the XR, you know, on these other components, but we also need to do it to the controllers because we want to synchronize the position, the rotation of the controller. So I'm going to add that as well here. And once we do that, we're going to be able to also uncheck the X, Y, and Z axis for both of them. So I'm just going to make sure that they're both currently set. And then basically once you do that, we need to just now set the couple of properties on the XR controller. So this is going to tell us what we're going to be allowing. And I'm going to be allowing enable input tracking because we want to basically do input tracking on it. We also want to do input actions. So it's going to be things like selecting. This is going to be things like rotating the controller and positioning the controller. And then that's basically how those. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly set some of these ones because they're going to take some time. So that's everything that we need to do on the left controller and the, the right hand controller. So basically have just all the action bindings. We also have the action bindings for the left and right hand. And also the controller component is now set up. So the, the next thing that we need to do, which is going to take some time, is going to be implementing the, the network player. So we're going to be focusing on the network player so that we can also disable some of the movement on the clients versus the movement on the owner. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a serializable field. This one is going to be private. And this is going to allow us to determine the placement area of our player. I did something like this on a previous video. So if you look at the previous videos that I did on the NGO, then you can, you know, you can learn more about that. But basically, it's going to set the players on the plane. And then I'm just going to do negative 10 to 10 meters. And then the next thing that I'll do here is I'm going to override the on network span. So we also need to make sure that this is going to be the object that we're going to be inheriting from, which is net, network behavior. And it's going to be, you know, all coming from netcode. So make sure that you do that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to be overriding. So I'll just do an override. And if you don't know C Sharp that well, overriding is basically overriding the implementation on, on the parent. In this case, we have these different methods that we can override because they, they're actually virtual. And then we don't need to do any of these. What we're going to do here is going to say disable client input, which I'm going to be implementing down below. And I'll just copy this because I'm lazy. I'll just do void and then copy paste. OK, so the, the first thing in here that we need to know is, are we the client, right? So if we're not the client, and actually what, what I'm going to do, if I am the client, and I am not the owner because hopefully we have, we, we don't want the server to do things that are specifically to the server. In this case, in this case, we want to determine, okay, 
if this player is the owner and basically it's a client, then we want to allow we want to allow people to be able to move to use input actions. But if we're not the owner, that means that it's a remote player, right? We don't want to be able to to change the position and rotation of those of basically of those players because it wouldn't be fair, right? We're gonna be we're gonna be moving other players, which does not doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I'm gonna do client move provider. So what I'm gonna do here on the next step is gonna be basically disabling everything. So let me go ahead and get all the components and then I'll show you here in just a second. All right guys, so just to give you an overview of what we're doing here is first we're gonna be, as soon as we expand this client, we're gonna check and see if we have ownership. If we don't have ownership, we're gonna be basically getting all the different components that we wanna disable for the remote client. We're gonna get the move provider, the controllers, the term provider, the client head, the client camera. We're basically gonna restrict them from doing anything. So we don't want a cam multiple cameras to be enabled in one game because it's not gonna work. So we're gonna be disabling the camera, we're gonna disable the movement, we're gonna disable if the character can turn or not, and I'm also going to be disabling whether I can that character can rotate, basically can get input and rotate the head, which is gonna ro rotate the avatar. We don't want this to take control of that because we want this to come from the client transform, so that's why we're doing some of this. And then I'm also going to be disabling the basically the left hand controllers and also the right hand controller. So, now that we have that, the next thing that we need to do is I'm gonna do private void star. And this is what we're gonna do to basically place the object. So I'm gonna say the same thing if this is a client. And well, in this case, it's gonna be if I, if I am the owner because I want to basically only position the, the player that where, where I am actually an owner of. Otherwise, the clients are gonna be sending me their position and rotation. So I'm just gonna do transform and then position. And then here we're just gonna do a vector three. I'm gonna get random that range. And if you remember on the very top, we have a placement area. So this is gonna be placement of X, placement of Y. And then for the position of, of Y, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use what, whatever we already have. I don't wanna change it. And then what I'll do here, I'll also do the same thing. And instead of using random that range, I think I just use range, there we go, because the other one is deprecated. And then I'll just use this right here for my Z axis as well. So this is gonna allow us to basically have the initial position be random, so that way we don't keep the, the player in the same area. The, the next pieces are gonna be, you know, what is going to allow us to take ownership. And I'll show you more about these in future videos, but let's go ahead and work on it because I think this is gonna make the experience a lot better. So we're gonna do on select grabable, and this is gonna be executed whenever we basically we select an item with the trigger button. So I'm gonna do select, enter, and then arcs. And then I'm just gonna do, I think this one I just, I just did event arcs. And then again in here, I'm gonna say, okay, if I am the client, and then I am the owner of this current, current object. So I'll just do the same thing here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to basically know, okay, what is the network object that we're trying to grab? And for those, for those of you who haven't done anything with grabbables, there is an XR grabbable component that you can add to anything that you're gonna be able to grab. And I'll show you how I set those up. Okay, so if you go into prefabs, you're gonna see that I have cube blue, cube red, cube white, sphere blue and red. So if we double click on one of these, this is all the components that we have. So it's basically just a cube with a box collider, also has a rigid body, and it has what's called a Nexar Grab Interactable. So just make sure that you add that component. I didn't change anything in here. This is all the defaults. And then I also need a network object because it's gonna be an object that we need to expand through the networking system so that we can synchronize that. And I also have a client transform script without the X, Y, and Z scale because this object is not gonna be changing the scale. And I also have a network rigid body because this one is using, well, in this case, this one is kinematic, but if it wasn't then, and you want to synchronize the physics, you're gonna have that, that object in there. I'll just add it for now. And then the other ones are basically the same. So if we go back into here, we need to get the network object component. So I'm just gonna say network object. And then in here, I'll just say network object 
select it, and then I'm just gonna get it from the interactable object, and then I'll just do a transform, and get component, this one will just do a network object. So it's gonna get me the network object of the actual object that I'm trying to interact with. So once you have that, I, I, I would do this just by default, just in case, you know, somebody disconnects and something happened, it's always good to check. So I'm just gonna check if network object is not null. Then what I'm gonna do here is I need to say, okay, I wanna, I wanna request ownership from this object to the server, right? Because the server is the, is the one that owns these objects. Anything that we spam through the spamming system, it's going to, not the spamming system, the spawning system, <laughs> is going to be owned by the server. So if we go into grabable creator, anything that happens in here, and I didn't cover this because I covered this in a previous video, but whenever you use this, which is called the span, you're going to be basically, it's gonna be from the server. The server is the only one that can do these kind of, you know, spanning of objects. So. That's what I'm having here. If it's a server and if it's a host, then I'm going to allow this object, you know, we're gonna be instantiating this object and then we're gonna span in that object. So, so in this case, I, I am selecting an object, so I need to tell the server, hey server, can I get ownership of this object? Obviously there, there could be collisions if we have multiple clients trying to interact with one object. I'm not gonna be, you know, handling those collisions right now, but it would be good in your experiences if you know, okay, if an object, is trying to be grabbed by, by two clients at the same time, you need to be handled concurrently. You might need to check, okay, who is grabbing that object first, or you wanna add some kind of priority to that. For now, we're just gonna assume that it's gonna be one client you know, grabbing an object and then another client grabbing a different object, or I let go of this object and then the new client grabs the object. So we're gonna be requesting ownership to the server or from the server. So let me do from the server. So I'll just do something here like request grabbable, which is gonna be owner, which is gonna be the name of the, the object of the method that we're gonna be requesting ownership from. And then I'm gonna say server RPC. And we'll come back into this because I need to implement that method. And then if we're doing a server RPC, remember we need that attribute. And it's gonna be public void, and then we're gonna be using that name, new owner client ID gonna be the client ID that we're going to be giving ownership to. And then I'm also going to be using something that I haven't used in the past, but this is how you can basically pass a network object reference to the server so it's serialized correctly when their server gets it. And it's called the network object reference. So that's the first time that I use that. I, it actually worked really well. And then what we'll do here is I'm just gonna say, okay, you know what? If I'm passing that in, I need to get it out. So I'm gonna try to get it. And it's gonna be try, it's gonna be basically getting a now variable. And then this one is gonna be a network object, because it's gonna be the the type of object that we're gonna be trying to get out. And then it's gonna be just network object. The reason why I put that in an if is because if this can get it out of the out of the reference, then it's gonna be successful. Otherwise, it won't be able to if it if it can find that network object reference, then this is gonna be false, so we won't be able to change ownership. And then I'll just say network object change ownership, and then the change ownership is going to be basically a new client. If for some reason you can get ownership, you can do something here like logger, or you can use the debug, that log. We can say something like log info, or we can do perhaps log warning, and then we can say enable to change ownership for a client ID, and then we can pass in the client ID that we're passing in here. And then we can do our string interpolation, which you guys know that I love a lot. And then in here we can go back and say, okay, this is a client. So now we need to pass in, okay, what is going to be the client that we're trying to get? So this is gonna be the owner client ID. So it's the player, the owner. So I'm gonna be passing my own ID because I'm the one requesting for ownership. And then I'm gonna be passing the, the reference of the object that I'm currently selecting. So. This is how that's gonna work. It's gonna run on the client side, and then if I am the owner, I'm gonna get the object that is selected. As long as that object is not null, then I'm gonna say, hey server, can, can you give me ownership of that grabbable? And if that, if everything works, then I should be able to move that, you know, that object around as a client owner. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do here. Let's go ahead and go back, make sure that everything in here, it's compiling, it looks like 
everything everything is working just fine so the last thing that we need to do is beyond you know beyond actually testing this thing is i need to make this a prefab so it's going to go ahead and drag it and drop it into prefabs and we can go ahead and delete this and remember the player is going to be creating from the main scene so well the setup scene which i call the main scene it's actually confusing the main scene is the one that we're going to be using to do the the networking the setup scene is going to be that basically all the initial setup of our, for everything so on the player prefab of the network manager we're going to be going into prefabs and gonna drag and drop this component here and also drag and drop this component make sure that you're using the unit transport that's going to be the one that i'm using for this video and that's basically everything that we need to set up in there all right guys let's go ahead and hit play and make sure that we can connect i have the oculus quest also connected you can see that i can move everything around so remember in this case i want to make sure that i select the host so i'm just going to go ahead and select the host and then as i look at you can see that we have a couple of cubes around i can also start looking let me see i'm going to see if i can move and i can currently rotate but for some reason i can't move the the player around so I can rotate it, but I cannot move. Let me make sure that the avatar also looks correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand a couple of components here. And then look at my little guy here. And I think the little guy is looking okay. I can, I can rotate. Looks like I... Okay, so the only problem that I have right now is I can't move the component. And, okay, so I think I know why. It's because this one needs to be enabled by default, which is gonna be enable input action so let's go ahead and fix that i'm gonna go into my prefab here and in the mode provider remember we need to enable these by default but disable it on any remote clients so i'm gonna go ahead and save that and make sure that okay so that looks good go ahead and hit play and let's try this one more time and okay so that looks okay so i'm gonna go into vr here let's start the host and now we can move around right I can rotate, I can select an item, except these ones are gigantic. So let me grab one of these little ones. I can select it with one hand. And the ownership of these objects are changing in real time. And I'm gonna show you here in just a second to basically to do it with a different client. And if we go back into here, let me go ahead and make sure that everything looks okay. So I'm gonna go into my scene view and we're gonna expand the multiplayer and I'm gonna go into my XR rig multiplayer and you can see how the object you know the avatar is changing obviously there's improvements in here if you didn't want to move the body you can change that and i can move the player here i can rotate it i can also if i move this you can see how the ray is changing to white when i select an object if i wanted to select that object which is going to be gigantic and you can obviously change this so that it doesn't collide with your head so let me go ahead and get another client connected and show you how that works all right guys, so I got currently two clients. It was kind of tricky to get it working, but you guys can see this is the second player. I can move the player, I can move the ray. And if I were to move the controller or the other player, you're also gonna see that that also, also moves. I can also, if I wanted to, let's see, if I wanted to move the other hand, I can also move the other hand. I can also move the player if I were to put the headset on, but I can also interact with this, right? So this was the key. If I want to interact with an object, let me go ahead and get back into here. And if I want to get closer, let me go ahead and get closer in here. And this is where I wish I had more, more help to do networking and multiplayer. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this object, right? And, and right now I own this object. So if I wanted to move around, and so I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. And if I wanted to basically grab that same object with the other component, with the other controller, I can also do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this controller, this Oculus Quest, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the other Oculus Quest so that we can also interact with that same object. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and then see where I am. And we can see that I can get, let me get closer so that I, you guys can see it right in the view. You can see the other player getting here, I can rotate. And then I'm gonna also grab that object and as I grab that object, you can see that now I can rotate and interact with the object. I can put it right here. Let me see if I can grab it with the other controller, unless it's already... Okay, so I have to put it on to, to show you, but that was basically the idea is that we have multiple players. The other thing that I'm gonna show you here is you can also look and see 
the different properties. So remember, this one is the one that we currently own, which is the Oculus Quest 2. The other one is running on the Oculus Quest 1. So on the Oculus Quest 1, if I look at the network object, you're gonna see that, let me see here. Yep, you're gonna see that this is the one that is currently the owner and the local player. And if I were to, actually this one is the Oculus Quest 2, this one is the Oculus Quest 1. And, and I know that because it's, this is currently not the owner. The owner is going to be this other object. But, but basically that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And also don't forget to subscribe because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you guys.